Some mathematicians solve problems, but once in a generation, someone changes the way we see them. From ancient poetry to the rhythm of a tabla, from a simple cube to equations centuries old, one mind began uncovering patterns no one knew were there. Not by force, by listening. To symmetry, to structure, to the hidden music of numbers. This is the story of Manjul Bhargava, the man who taught numbers how to sing. Our story begins in the quiet city of Hamilton, Ontario, in the summer of 1974. A child is born into a family that seems, almost by design, engineered for ideas. Manjul Bhargava didn't enter a world of ordinary conversations. He entered a home where mathematics and poetry were part of everyday life, a home shaped by centuries of Indian intellectual tradition, carried through migration, scholarship and deep cultural memory. His mother, Dr. Mira Bhargava, a mathematics professor, surrounded him with numbers, shapes, and the kind of puzzles that most children never encounter. From his grandfather, Purushottam Lal Bhargava, a respected Sanskrit scholar, came a different kind of influence. Ancient poetry, classical meters, stories embedded in precise rhythm. He taught young Manjul that words could have structure, verses could have symmetry, and that beauty often came from hidden patterns. This dual inheritance, mathematics from his mother and poetry from his grandfather, was more than cultural richness. It was the beginning of a mind trained to see connections where others saw none. When the family moved to Long Island, New York, Manjul grew up like many children, but thought unlike most. He devoured puzzles, he played with patterns, he turned games into investigations. By the time he was 14, he had already completed every mathematics and computer science course his school could offer. Teachers simply ran out of material. Manjul had outgrown the curriculum before he had outgrown childhood. But Manjul's world was not only equations and puzzles, it pulsed with rhythm. From a young age, he trained in tabla, the Indian classical percussion art, learning from none other than the legendary Ustad Zakir Hussain. Under Zakir Hussain's mentorship, he absorbed not just musical technique, but the internal logic of rhythm, cycles, permutations, symmetrical patterns of beats, the kind of structures mathematicians dream of. It was in this fusion, the beats of the tabla, the metrics of Sanskrit verse, the puzzles of number theory, that a young mind quietly formed its identity, not as a mathematician, not as a musician, not as a poet, but as a seeker of patterns, a thinker who would one day unite ideas separated by centuries and reveal mathematics in forms no one had imagined before. By the time Manjul Bhargava reached high school, the trajectory of his life was already unmistakable. He wasn't just good at mathematics, he lived inside it. At Plain Edge High School on Long Island, Manjul graduated as valedictorian. No surprise to anyone who had watched him race through the school's curriculum faster than new material could be found for him. Teachers recall a quiet student with a calm smile and an ability to solve problems upside down, sideways and in ways no textbook had imagined. In 1992, he steps onto the campus of Harvard University, ready for the next arena of intellectual challenge. But Harvard too, is soon confronted with the same problem as his high school teachers. How do you keep up with a mind that won't stop accelerating? As an undergraduate, Manjul dives straight into deep number theory, territory often left untouched until graduate school. By 1996, he graduates with an AB in mathematics, earning the prestigious Morgan Prize for undergraduate research. The prize is given only for work that is already at the cutting edge of mathematics. For a college student to win it, is almost unheard of, but Manjul is just getting started. He heads to Princeton University for his PhD, 
entering one of the world's strongest mathematical ecosystems. There, he studies under a living legend, Sir Andrew Wiles, the man who cracked Fermat's last theorem after centuries of failed attempts. Under Wiles' mentorship, Manjul finds both challenge and freedom. Challenge in the towering complexity of number theory and freedom to rethink the field from its foundations. Supported by the ultra-competitive Hertz Fellowship, Manjul has the space and the pressure to attempt something bold. And in 2001, that bold attempt arrives. His doctoral thesis unveils a new universe of ideas, higher composition laws, a concept so strange, so fresh and so powerful that the number theory community pauses and stares. With one thesis, a 27-year-old PhD student resurrects a chain of mathematical thought stretching back to Gauss and extends it in directions no one had anticipated. It is the kind of thesis that doesn't just graduate you, it announces you. Fresh out of Princeton, Manjul enters the Institute for Advanced Study, Einstein's old intellectual playground, where creativity is the currency and impossibly difficult ideas are the norm. Here, he continues exploring ancient mathematical structures, modern algebra, and the hidden arithmetic geometry that links them together. After time at the IAS and visiting positions at Harvard, he returns to Princeton, and the university does something extraordinary. In 2003, they promote him to full professor, at just 28 years old. In mathematics, where lifetimes are spent chasing proofs, reaching full professorship this young is almost unthinkable. For two centuries, Carl Friedrich Gauss's law of composition stood like a monument. Beautiful, mysterious, impenetrable. Mathematicians studied it, admired it, taught it. But few dared to imagine that it could be extended. Pargava did not merely extend it, he reinvented it. Instead of manipulating long classical formulas, he pictured something astonishingly simple. A cube, eight corners, 12 edges, six faces. And within that cube, he discovered hidden symmetries that allowed him to generalize Gauss's composition law into an entire family of new laws. Suddenly, old problems opened up like locked doors. The bargava of a cube became a new lens through which number theorists could see centuries old structures with complete clarity. It wasn't just a breakthrough, it was an earthquake. Most people think the factorial is fixed, a tidy sequence beginning with 1, 2, 6, 24. But Pargava asked a radical question. What if factorials could be defined over any number system, over any subset of integers, over any algebraic structure? His answer became the Pargava factorial, a sweeping generalization that linked back to a decades-old conjecture of George Polya. It expanded the toolbox of algebra in a way that mathematicians are still unpacking today. The cube itself became iconic, an object that blended geometry, symmetry and algebra into a single conceptual engine. By slicing the cube in different directions, Pargava recovered entire families of algebraic forms. By labeling its vertices, he uncovered new relationships between quadratic and higher degree forms. It was as if he had reached into the structure of numbers themselves and found a hidden user interface. Then came another triumph, the classification of quadratic forms. Almost a century earlier, the legendary mathematician Conway and collaborators had proven the 15 theorem, a result describing which quadratic forms could represent all positive integers. But the deeper universal classification, the fully generalized theorem, remained elusive. Working with Jonathan Hanker, Pargava pushed the boundary further, proving the 290 theorem, a single statement describing precisely which quadratic forms represent all positive integers. It was a clean, elegant resolution to a vast classification problem that had resisted mathematicians for generations. But perhaps the most influential part of Pargava's work is his contribution to elliptic curves structures at the heart of modern cryptography, algebraic geometry, and even internet security. 
For decades, mathematicians sought to understand the rank of elliptic curves, how many rational solutions they contain. No one knew the average rank across all curves. It was one of the field's most stubborn mysteries. Together with his student Arul Shankar, Bhargava developed new counting techniques that transformed the landscape. Their groundbreaking work provided the first unconditional bounds on the average rank, shifts so large that the entire field recalibrated its expectations. These results rippled through number theory and cryptography alike. Pargava's work also pierces deep into class groups, the mysterious objects that encode how unique factorization fails in number fields. For decades, mathematicians relied on conjectures from Cohen and Lenstra to make predictions about the distribution of class groups. These predictions were tantalizing, but unproven. Pargava's techniques offered new evidence and new pathways toward understanding these distributions, making the once abstract heuristics feel within reach of rigorous confirmation. And then there is his geometric sieve, a method blending geometry, probability and algebra to count number theoretic structures with stunning accuracy. It enabled breakthroughs in problems that previously felt uncountable, unmanageable or immeasurably complex. In just a decade, Manjul Pargava reshaped entire regions of mathematics, and the world began to take notice. In 2014, in Seoul, South Korea, the mathematical world gathered for its greatest tradition, the awarding of the Fields Medal. Often compared to a Nobel Prize for mathematics, it is reserved only for the young and only for the exceptional. That year, the International Mathematical Union called Pargava's work powerful, innovative and transformative. And as he stepped onto the stage to receive the Fields Medal, he joined one of the most exclusive intellectual lineages in human history. But the Fields Medal was only the beginning of the acknowledgements, the Fermat Prize, the Infosys Prize, the Cole Prize in Number Theory, the Sastra Ramanujan Prize, the Clay Research Award. Each one represented not just a stamp of approval, but a recognition that his ideas had changed how mathematicians think. And honours followed from the scientific world at large. Election to the Royal Society, membership in the US National Academy of Sciences, institutions that had existed for centuries Institutions that had welcomed giants now carved his name among them. At Princeton, Bhargava became more than a researcher. He became a mentor, a guide. His office became a place where young mathematicians, nervous yet hopeful, came seeking direction. And many walked out transformed. Students like Arul Shankar collaborated with him on groundbreaking work on elliptic curves contributions that themselves would influence the field for years to come. Pargava taught not by dictation, but by conversation, by asking questions that gently nudge someone toward discovering the answer on their own. His lectures, whether at Princeton, Harvard, Leiden, TIFA or IIT Bombay, were known for their clarity, their warmth and the effortless way he made difficult ideas feel intuitive, almost obvious. And through his mentorship, entire new lines of research opened, carried forward by the next generation. In the end, Manjul Bhargava's story is not merely one of brilliance, it is one of curiosity, creativity, humility and the joy of discovery. A legacy still unfolding, a mind still searching for patterns, and a voice reminding us that the universe hides beauty everywhere, if only we learn how to see it.